It's been almost two months since the catastrophic Nepal earthquake. Medical supplies, food and shelter are still in desperate need as monsoon season approaches. Dan Keyes is a new, is a Kiwi tracking guide living in Nepal in the small village of Gogani near the epicentre. He had been fundraising to build a school library which was almost complete, basically complete, when the quake struck. Now he's on a mission to help rebuild the town he loves so much. Dan's back in New Zealand to fundraise and joins me now. Dan, good morning. Morning, Paul. You know, the media are uh, guilty quite often of all of a sudden something's a story, it's huge, we bang on about it all the time and then we move off and feast on another yarn. Right. Uh, meantime, the people that are that are living in the aftermath of the story are still living in it. What is the situation now in Gogani, the town that you know the most? Um, so most people have kind of moved on to phase two, we're calling it, which is monsoon preparation. So the rains are going to hit any day now, um, which means basically everything's going to stop. Access to the villages will be cut off and landslides are a real danger after okay, the quake. So unlike previous monsoon seasons, presumably a lot of them um, are without adequate shelter. So that's going to make it that much harder. Yeah, a lot, it's, uh, everyone's still living under plastic and they will be for the, the unforeseen future. Um, people have dismantled their, their houses, so the, the stones have been stacked up and the wooden beams are all there waiting for rebuild, which will happen probably starting September after monsoon. And many of them, I suppose, are going through an extraordinary mourning process, not only for family and friends, but also for their lives that presumably will not be the same again, if ever. That's right. There's villages completely destroyed, um, villages that are still buried in rubble. There's a lot of people that are still missing um, so there, and a lot of people, there's nowhere to go back to. So they're living in monasteries in Kathmandu city, um, or on the side of the road and underneath of tarpaulin. There, there is that thing, isn't there, in that part of the world where people that, that work there, um, foreigners that work there, and particularly New Zealanders, want to give back to the communities because they're so desperately poor and in need of things. You were doing this by way of a library for the school and just on its completion, the earthquake struck. I think the library's still there, but the school is no longer really there. That's right, yeah, the classrooms aren't usable, so there's um, makeshift tin shelters, which are temporary classrooms for the monsoon. The library fared okay, um, so we still plan on opening that post-monsoon. Um, however, all the schools will shut up in the villages there for the monsoon. It's it's too dangerous to be there. So you, you leave during monsoon season. I mean, you would always do that. You would always come back to New Zealand. Yep. Was it different leaving this time because you were leaving people in not just a, a poor village, which you've always left up until now, but a devastated village? Yeah, and, and the people up there are kind of like family to me. I've, I've been there for five years. So it was sad to say goodbye. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be okay but I imagine we're going to hear some bad news come out of Nepal before the monsoon's done. Yeah, yeah, because it'd be so much harder to live through a monsoon now, this, right. this time, this year. Um, all right, you've come back to raise some money. You want $150,000. What will you do with the money? Um, so we're going to concentrate on school and education, um, so making the paths safe for the kids to get to the schools to help rebuild the classrooms. Um, first priority will be to complete the library and, and stock that out um, and move on to uh, the medical clinics is the, will be the next stage. Brilliant. I know you've got $83,000 already, so you're well on the way to the target. That's right, yeah. Well, I've got about 4000 left. We've, we've got most of it out there. Um, so we're going to be working pretty hard to do some fun things over the off-season to get some more on Brilliant. Board. We'll talk about those in a moment, Dan Keyes. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Active Hearts Himalaya founder. Uh, founder. Um, head to paulhenry.co.nz and visit the Sites We Like page for information about how you can donate to Dan's charity. So just go to paulhenry.co.nz, Sites We Like page, and you will be able to donate money if you would like to do that. All right.